Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions, my name's Chris, and today we have yet another TP-Link Omada video for you, but this one's a little bit different because we are going to set up TP-Link Omada for a very basic network from start to finish, meaning we're gonna take all of this equipment that I have right here from a factory default state, and we are going to turn it into a working network with three VLANs and three separate wireless networks. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the infrastructure that I'm going for, and then we will start the actual process. So, internet comes into this TLR605 firewall, and we're gonna configure three different LANs. Uh, one sort of main LAN and then two VLANs. So the main LAN is going to be 192.168.42.1. We're gonna call that our secure LAN. Then we're gonna have VLAN ID 10, which is gonna be for guest wireless clients. Then we're gonna have VLAN ID 107, which is going to be for our IoT devices. We're also going to be creating some ACLs that will block access from the IoT network to the other networks. Uh, the guest network will also be client isolated, uh, but our secure network will be able to see anything else on the network. So we have our little firewall here, the TLR605. That is going to go into this eight port PoE switch, the TLSG2210MP. And that PoE switch is going to power up one access point, in this case, we're using the EAP610 wall, uh, just because it's a nice small form factor, but you can really use any of the TP-Link uh, Omada-based access points uh, if you have those instead. And then for our controller, we're gonna use the OC200, again, because that is what I have on hand, uh, but you can also have the bigger OC300 controller, or you can install TP-Link Omada onto your own virtual machine or spare server or you know desktop even that you have lying around. Uh, I have a full video about how to install the software-based version of TP-Link Omada, and I will put a link to that video uh, down in the description below. So if you don't have this OC200 or OC300 hardware, you can install your own software-based Omada controller. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do here is we are going to take my handy dandy little factory reset tool and we are going to factory reset all of these devices to a factory default state and then I will come back and we'll get started with the installation. When these devices are at a factory default state, you're gonna notice a slowly blinking light. In the case of the OC200 hardware controller, it's the cloud light that is slowly blinking. So we're gonna do the initial adoption uh, through the TP-Link Omada app. So from the app, we can click the plus symbol in the upper right-hand corner. It says, make sure the LED of your hardware controller is flashing slowly. We're gonna say next, and now it's gonna want us to scan the QR code on the bottom of the device. Success, your hardware controller has been added. Now we're gonna say done and we can see that we are online and the IP of the hardware controller is 192.168.0.101. So let's go ahead and click on it and we're connected. We're gonna say, let's get started. We can give it a name and then we can select our time zone. In my case, it's going to be US Pacific time. Next, application scenario. I don't know how much of a difference this makes, but in our case, we're just gonna say home and it has already detected the three devices that I have plugged in. So the switch, the firewall, as well as the access point. So we're gonna select all of those devices and we're gonna say next. And then we're gonna give it a network name. Now this is the network name for the quote unquote main network or what we're calling the secure network. So I'm just gonna call it secure wireless. And then for a password, we're gonna give it the super strong password of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Obviously, if this is your own network, choose a much stronger wireless network password. This is just for demonstration purposes. Now, there is a guest Wi-Fi button that we can see here. However, I'm going to enable that guest Wi-Fi separately a little bit later down the road. So we're gonna say next. And now we can add our administrator name. I'm gonna say admin. You can add an email for the administrator optionally. In my case, I'm just gonna leave it blank, and then we will give it a strong administrative password. Now we get our summary screen. We're gonna say done. And at this point, our different devices are going to start to adopt. So I'm gonna pause the video again here, and we will come back 
once all of these devices have been provisioned to this default network, then we're gonna start making our configuration changes. Okay, everything has now been adopted successfully and if we look back in the application and we click on devices, we can see that all three of those devices are connected. That's gonna be the firewall, the switch, as well as that in-wall access point. From this application, you can actually do quite a bit of the configuration that we need to do. However, for the purposes of this video, it's a lot easier for me to just connect to it uh, through my computer and record the screen. So that's what we're gonna do for the remainder of this video. And from the Omada app, I can see that the controller is at 192.168.0.101. So let's go ahead and connect to that now uh, through a standard internet browser. And here we go, we are now connected to our Omada controller. And again, this is gonna be very similar if you have a software-based controller instead of a hardware-based controller, you just wanna to browse to the IP address of that controller in order to configure everything that you need to configure. So first things first, if we go back to our infrastructure layout, notice that our secure LAN is 182.168.42.1 slash 24. The reason that I changed the secure LAN is because basically, Every default network in the world is 192.168.0.1 or 192.168.1.1. So I don't personally like using those. Now, there's no problem with using that IP range. It's a private IP range. It's very rare that someone's gonna be able to get onto your network you know, and, and somehow do something to your network because they know that private IP range. You know, most networks in the world you know, by default, use those ranges. So it's not a big deal, uh, but I'm going to change mine uh, just out of habit. And we're gonna make it 182.168.42.1. So let's go back to the Omada controller. We're gonna click on settings in the bottom left-hand corner. We're gonna click on wired networks, then we're gonna click on LAN. And then here we have our main LAN interface. We can see it's 182.168.0.1 slash 24, uh, VLAN 1. Let's go ahead and edit that interface. And we can see that this LAN is spread across the four switch ports on our firewall. You know, we have the WAN port on the far left, we have a LAN port on the far right, and then these three ports in between are combo ports. You can set them up to be additional WAN ports or they can be LAN ports as well. So we are just going to set, uh, leave that all the same. But for gateway subnet, we're gonna come down here and say 42.1 slash 24. We're gonna update our DHCP range. We're gonna scroll down and notice the DHCP range updated to 182.168.42.1 through 254, which basically also includes the IP address of the firewall itself. So at a bare minimum, we wanna change this to 42.2, but I'm actually gonna change it to 42.10, leaving two through nine as available static IP addresses that I can set individually on devices if I want to in the future. And again, your mileage may vary. Go ahead and set your DHCP settings to whatever you feel is best. For DNS server, we're also gonna set this to manual and let's give it two public DNS servers. We're gonna say 1.1.1.1 and then uh, we'll say 9.9.9.9. If you have something like a pie hole where you are running DNS locally on your network that also does some sort of you know malware filtering, stuff like that, this is where you're gonna wanna set the IP address of that pie hole instead. So for now, that's all we need to do. Let's go ahead and say save. And now that we've saved that setting, we've just changed the IP address of our firewall, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait a little while for that IP address change to take place and then we need to reconnect to our controller. But remember that the controller, the switch, and the access point all receive their IP addresses from DHCP. So that means they will have to receive new IP addresses. Now you can just wait, right? And after a while, but we're talking a long while, they will get new IP addresses eventually. So instead of waiting, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the power on the switch, which is also in turn gonna remove the power from my two PoE powered devices, the access point and the controller, and then I'm gonna plug that switch back in, and when everything boots back up, it should grab a new IP address in the 192.168.42.x range, uh, since the firewall will have then been updated with that new IP address information, and the DHCP pool has also been updated to that new network range. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do next. 
I'm gonna give the firewall about four or five minutes in to make its changes. That's probably more than enough time. Then I'm gonna pull the plug on the switch and then plug it back in, wait for another two or three minutes and we should be back up and running and good to go. If you have notifications enabled in the TP-Link Omada app on your device, you will get a notification that tells you when the Omada controller comes back online after that whole reboot if you opted to change the subnet IP address. So I did receive that notification and logging into the Omada app, I can see that the new IP address for my OC200 controller is 192.168.42.12. So I have browsed to that IP address in Google Chrome here and everything looks like it is back online just fine. So the first thing that I wanna do is actually I wanna go over to my clients. And one of my clients here is the OC200. It has a DHCP IP address. It was handed out 192.168.42.12. But remember when I set up the DHCP server, I left that range of two through nine open in case I wanted to assign a static IP address to any device. This is a device that I do want to assign a static IP address to because I want to know where the controller is at all times so that I can get to it to configure things. If I have it left as DHCP, it's not likely, but it's possible that the IP address of the controller will change, right? So we don't want that. So I'm going to click on the controller. I'm going to click on config and I'm going to click on use fixed IP address. And I'm going to give it the IP address of 192.168.42.2 and we're going to say apply. Of course, I just changed the IP address that I am browsing to. So I'm going to wait another couple minutes and as soon as this comes back as that new IP address, we will then reconnect to it on 192.168.42.2 and it will never change away from that IP address again. Okay, everything's back online now. One quick note, I did actually have to reboot the controller for it to take on that new IP address. So just one extra step in there, but after it rebooted, everything connected up just fine. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start configuring our wired and wireless networks. We're gonna come down here to settings, wired networks. We're gonna click on LAN, and let's take another quick look at our main secure network. Let's go ahead and edit that. We're gonna just call it secure. This is optional. You don't have to change the name of your lands if you don't want to. And I'm also going to scroll down here and we're going to put in the IP address of the Omada controller so that DHCP can hand that out to clients. 192.168.42.2. Now this is optional. Um, it's probably going to work just fine if you're not passing out this DHCP option to your clients, but it might actually help a little bit uh, or make things a little bit faster, for instance, when you adopt new access points or switches or other devices. Okay, so we're gonna save that setting. And if we go back to our infrastructure, we can look at the three different networks that we want to create. So we've got VLAN ID 10 for our guests, 192.168.10.x, and VLAN ID 107 for IoT, which is 192.168.107.x. So let's go back to the Omada controller. We're gonna say create a new LAN. We're gonna call this one guest network. We're gonna leave it as interface. And the reason we're doing that is because we want this network to have a DHCP server and be able to pass out IP addresses to the clients that connect. We are going to select all four LAN interfaces, just like the main LAN. We're gonna give it VLAN ID 10. For the gateway subnet, if we look at the infrastructure, we want 192.168.10.1 slash 24. So we're gonna say 192.168.10.1 slash 24. We're gonna click update DHCP range, and then we're gonna scroll down, and I'm gonna change this to two. So our DHCP pool, or the IP addresses that are available to be handed out to clients that connect to this network, is gonna be 192.168.10.2, through 192.168.10.254. For DNS server, we're gonna set that manually again. Let's give it 1.1.1.1 and 9.9.9.9. Uh, and we're gonna say save. So now I have my secure network at 192.168.42.1 and my guest network at 192.168.10.1. So we have one more network that we need to add. We're gonna say create new LAN. We're gonna call this IOT. Same thing, we're gonna select all four of our switch interfaces. We're gonna call this VLAN 107, 
and it's going to be 192.168.107.1 slash 24. Update the DHCP range. We're going to change that to dot 2. And again, your mileage is going to vary here. If you have devices that you want to be able to set statically in your IoT network, such as Home Assistant or you know whatever else, you can leave some extra space in here. For me and for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm making the DHCP pool everything except for dot one. For DNS servers, let's once again give it 1.1.1.1 and 9.9.9.9, and then we're gonna say save. Okay, so now we have our three different networks. This is perfect, moving right along. The next thing we want to do is start to create our wireless network. So there should be one in here already that is secure wireless. That's the one that we set up during the initial setup wizard. Let's take a look at that network. We can see that it's running on both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. It's not set to be a guest network and it has a WPA personal password of 123456789 like we set up already. So that network is good to go. Let's go ahead and add a new wireless network. We're gonna call this Omada Guest. We're gonna run this one on 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. We're going to enable guest network policies. And if we hover over right here, it says with guest network enabled, guest network will block clients from reaching any private IP subnet. That's what we want. We want our guests to connect to the network and they can get out to the internet but that's it, right? We don't want them touching anything else on our network. So we're also gonna give this a WPA personal password of 123456789. Again, set a stronger password uh, in reality. For advanced settings, remember, this network is running on VLAN ID 10. So we need to say VLAN enable, and we're gonna say VLAN ID 10. That way the devices on this network are given 192.168. 10.x instead of 42.x from our secure range. And down here, look at this, rate limit, okay? So rate limit is something that we might wanna do on a guest network if we want to limit the amount of bandwidth that the network can consume. So we're gonna say create new rate limit profile. We're gonna call this guests. And the download limit for our guests is gonna be 20 megabits per second and the upload limit is going to be five megabits per second. And we're gonna apply that change. So we're basically throttling down our guest network so that they have enough bandwidth, but no guest can actually sort of suck up all of our bandwidth for the rest of our uh, business or uh, home. Okay, let's go ahead and apply that change. And here we can see guest network enabled, rate limit enabled, VLAN ID 10. All right, so let's do one more wireless network. This is gonna be for our IoT devices. You know, our uh, mural frames or our smart refrigerators or our smart blenders or whatever else you happen to have that we don't want to have access to our secure network. All right, so we're gonna say IoT devices or you can just call it IOT or something. You know, mostly those devices are 2.4 gigahertz, but I'm gonna leave this as 2.4 and five gigahertz because there certainly are some devices like, you know, Sonos speakers and stuff like that that can take advantage of the five gigahertz range. Not to mention, when I'm doing an IOT network, you know, if I need to control Sonos speakers or, or if I wanna send a video to my Roku, um, I always have my own device, my phone, or my tablet in that same IoT network. I don't usually ever try to go cross network with that kind of stuff. Like I don't keep my phone in the secure network and try to push videos across to a Roku in the IoT network. Not saying that you can't do that, but it's much more complicated in terms of access control lists to facilitate those type of connections. So I always just put my own devices also in that IoT network. So we're not gonna enable guest network because IoT devices within the network we're gonna to want to have those devices talk to each other. For instance, the example of using my phone to send a YouTube video to a Roku device, right? We don't want that communication blocked. So we're not gonna say guest network, but we are gonna give it a super strong password of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For VLAN, we are going to say VLAN ID 107 as per our documentation. And then we're not gonna rate limit the IoT network. Again, you can if you want, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're not gonna do that. Let's go ahead and say apply. 
Okay, at this point, everything looks pretty good, but I have very open communication between my networks, except for that guest network, which we enabled the guest network policies for. So let's take a look at some of that stuff. So from my phone here, I am connecting to the Omada guest network. And if we look at my IP addressing information in Network Analyzer, we can see I have the correct DNS servers, I have the correct gateway IP, I have 192.168.10.2 as my IP address, uh, network's connected, we're basically good to go. Let's run some quick tests here. We're gonna ping 1.1.1.1, and yes, we do get replies, so we do have internet access. Let's also test an FQDN. We're gonna ping slash dot dot org, and again, we have name resolution as well as internet access here as well. But if I try to ping uh, this device here, so this tablet I've set up in the IoT network, and it is 192.168.107.2. So if I try to ping 107.2 and say start, I can't ping it, right, because it's I'm in the guest network and I'm trying to get across to my IoT secure network, it's not gonna let me do that. Stop that. Now, let's go ahead and connect to my main secure network with the Wi-Fi and we should see something different. Okay, so I'm now connected to the 192.168.42.1 network. We can see I have an IP address of 192.168.42.12. Let's go back to our tools and we're gonna start that test again and look now, I'm receiving ping replies from my tablet in that IoT network. So we've proven that the guest network cannot see into the IoT network, but my secure network can see into that uh, network and vice versa. If I run pings the other direction, I know you can't really see this very easily, but uh, I have green pings going from the tablet to the IP address of my phone here. So it's okay for our secure network to get into the IoT network, but we don't want the IoT network to be able to get into the secure network. So the next thing we need to do is set up an access control list to prevent that from happening. Okay, so from the dashboard of Omada, we wanna to go to settings, and then we're gonna click on network security and ACLs. Then in ACLs, we wanna click on switch ACLs. We're gonna say create new rule. We're gonna call this block IOT status is enabled. We're gonna deny traffic on all protocols. Now, if you wanted to deny all traffic back and forth, you can enable bi-directional. And that's gonna create two rules, blocking all traffic from my source to my destination networks and vice versa. In this case though, I don't care if my source networks get into the IOT network. So then down here for source, we're gonna say anything coming from the IOT network and then trying to get to network secure, we are denying access on all protocols. We're gonna bind that to all ports, all ports, and we're gonna say apply. Okay, so now that change needs to propagate out through the devices. It just takes, you know, 30 seconds or so. Once that change is done, I should no longer be able to ping from my tablet here, which is in the IoT network, over to my phone, which is in the secure network. And as you recall, that was working uh, just a few minutes ago. So again, my phone is at 192.168.42.12 in the secure network. The tablet is at 192.168.107.2 in the IoT network. Let's go back to tools and we're gonna ping uh, 192.168.42.12. Uh, I don't know if, again, I don't know how easy, easy this is to see. I'm not screen recording my tablet, uh, but I have all greens from the previous test. We're gonna start the test again. And now I don't have any greens. So I'm blocked trying to ping uh, out to the secure network from the IoT network, which is exactly what we want. But if I try to ping something like slash dot dot org, DNS lookups are working and internet access is working. I'm getting green replies from that internet address. All right, stop that. Okay, that's where we're gonna stop this video. Okay, so basically we have set up three different networks, a secure network, an IoT network, and a guest network. The guest network is completely client isolated. The IoT network uh, cannot see into other networks, but the secure network, for instance, can see into the IoT network, no problem. Uh, and we have three wireless networks, one that corresponds to each of those uh, wired networks. And that's about it. You can take this a lot further, right? There's a lot more configuration that can be done uh, for any SDN such as TP-Link Omada, 
but this is a very basic setup that now you can plug in all your devices and be confident that everything is set up properly and securely. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.